Matt Burner, you're taking a look at the All Stakes Pick 4 sequence at Charlestown on Saturday. Charlestown Classic Saturday. You can play this entire sequence as well as all the other wagers from Charlestown this upcoming Saturday afternoon with DRF Bets. We'd strongly encourage you to head on over to bets.drf.com. Take a look at all the great deals that we have available for our new sign-up members. This sequence races 9 through 12. It's a $100,000 guarantee. 50 cents is the base bet. We're going to go through. I'm going to throw out some horses. Maybe you'll agree with them. Maybe you'll disagree with them. But when it's all said and done, I think you should go through, play this sequence with DRF Ticketmaker. That way you can emphasize your opinions accordingly and really hammer home something that, you know what, if you catch a bunch of A's and you just are spot on with your handicapping, you want to make sure you get the most bang for your buck. So head on over to DRF Ticketmaker. That way you can really emphasize your opinions accordingly. Again, all stakes. Races 9 through 12, I'm going to go through. We'll start off with the ninth race. It's the Russell Road. $75,000 is the purse. Seven furlongs, which is two turns at Charlestown. Uh, I'm going to look at three horses in particular, the one, the two, and the five. The one is Clubman. He's a horse that predominantly has been campaigned in the Mid-Atlantic, most notably Laurel throughout his career. His most recent run in a state-bred stakes race going six furlongs, probably a little bit on the sharp side for him at this point in his career. He's a five-year-old gelding. But the important thing to note from a speed figure standpoint, he is right there with the best horses in this race. And he's 12 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, 119 raw time form US rating in that most recent run. That's the highest last out in the field. I definitely want to be using him. And I'd be using him as an A as well. Uh, the two cool arrow goes out for Joe Sharp. Highest last out buyer in the field with a 91. That came at Oaklawn in a non-winners of three lifetime allowance race. There's a part of me that looks at him and says, I don't, I don't totally trust him. Yes, he's 6 of 15 lifetime, but he's the kind of horse that I think you have to look at this entire sequence in any of the races at Charlestown on Saturday, and you see that he's one for one at Charlestown. And that, to me, is a giant piece because some horses take to this configuration and some don't. Now, granted, that was over a sloppy sealed racing surface, and hopefully we have a fast track on Saturday. But Cool Arrow, I think, if nothing else, you got to give him a look because of his track record there. And the other horse that I'm intrigued with is the five line judge for Tom Amos. Now, the reason most notably that I am intrigued with Line Judge, not just because of the connections with Amos and Johnny V uh, named to ride, but he has been running at Delta Downs recently, and Delta Downs, again, if you're unfamiliar, it's a bull ring. It's sort of comparable to Charlestown, and he's run quite well there. He has two wins and a second-place finish, only beaten by a half-length in his most recent start. That was his first off of a little bit of a layoff. I think he's going to be ready to go in a spot like this. He's 9-2 to two on the morning line. Those are the three horses I'd be looking at in race 9. The Russell Road kick things off in this $100,000 pick four sequence. We move on to race number 10. It is the Dance to Bristol Stakes. Again, $100,000 purse, seven furlongs, two turns. Five, six, and seven were the ones that I thought were interesting. The five is tweeting for Jorge Navarro. Now, this is a horse that has figures, and figures, to me, usually are the tail of the tape. You want to look for horses that are fast enough, but there is always that piece in the back of my mind that I look at it and say she's 2 of 17 lifetime and 8 times second or third. Would she be a lone A for me? Not by a long shot. I, I would certainly need some backup coverage, and that's why I'd want to use a couple of these other ones, most notably Lake Pontchartrain. She's 2 to 1 on the morning line. She's 12 for 23 lifetime at Charlestown eight other times. Second or third. There have only been three out of 23 lifetime starts at Charlestown that she's been out of the money. I think she's rock solid. She's coming into this in good form. Won that first start off the bench. Um, I just think she's in many ways the horse to beat in this spot. Two to one. If you can get that, that might be worth a win wager as well. And if you're looking for a little bit of a, an added price, um, I think the number seven timeless curls is interesting for Dale Capuano. Now, there's no no guarantee that she runs here. She's cross entered at Laurel on Saturday. They've got a big day of racing as well. I just feel like when you look and see what her three most recent runs, one was at 7 eighths, one was at a mile and 16th, one was at a mile and 16th over a muddy sealed track. I think all three of those races were quite good. And I know maybe she didn't pass the test in that Maryland racing most recent start, but two starts back, she won that stakes race very impressively. I liked her that day. I think there's a real scenario where she continues on that sort of trend if she runs here. Now, again, the configuration's a little bit on the wonky side for her. She's never encountered this, but if she does go here, I think she's got a big chance at a very, very square price, 10 to 1. We move on to the main event. It is the DRF Bets race of the day, race number 11. It's the Charlestown Classic. Uh, you can find the entire video preview over on video.drf.com or the Racing Forms YouTube channel. Uh, you can also get free formulator past performances on the race of the day page. Uh, to me, three horses that I'd be looking at, the one, the five, and the nine. I just kind of want to go against some of the shorter prices, but also include some of them. Uh, the horse that I picked on top, Mongolian Groom, we'll find out if it translates over 
to the if his form translates over to this kind of configuration and off this quick turnaround. But if he runs a Santa Anita handicap, I think simply put, that's better than what anyone else is capable of right now. You're not going to get the likes of Gift Box and McKinsey in here. If he runs back to that race, I think he's got a big, big chance. The five horse in here would be a backup, but imperative would be the kind of horse to me that if I caught a couple of A's in those first two legs, I would want to have some piece of imperative. He's 20 to 1 in the morning line. His recent form, it, it's entirely possible he just can't run anymore. But boy, he loves Charlestown. He's gotten around this track wonderfully through four lifetime starts, twice a winner. I think there's a real chance that if he's going to fire any kind of shot ever again, that this is going to be when he does it. I'd be using him as a backup. Don't think I'd have him as a main A. And then the nine horse in here, War Story. I think he's run too well to lose in his two two tries here at Charlestown. Now, granted, he's coming off of a layoff. He's been campaigned at longer distances recently. But there's a part of me that thinks if you can run over this sort of configuration, it's going to continue to translate. And he seems to be in decent enough form. He's fired fresh off the bench in the past. Uh, those would be the three horses that I'd be looking at here. And if you're alive, hopefully we all are, I'm going to go on to the payoff leg, the 12th race. Four and a half furlongs. It's going to be a quick dash. This is the It's Been Too Long. It's a state bred race for fillies and mares. Uh, three, five, and eight for me. The three CR cases legacy. Uh, just based on that most recent run, I thought it was fast enough from a buyer standpoint, from a time form standpoint. The raw 90, the 56 on the buyer scale, both of those numbers put this one right there. Uh, the five is the horse that they're all going to need to beat. That's Parisian Diva. First start off of the bench, came back and just whistled. Went out there, won by more than six lengths. 101 time form US rating and a 59 buyer. Again, I've brought up the 20 point sort of differential. There's a real scenario where that 101. If you believe that, then that buyer could be closer to an 81 as opposed to a 59. And if that's the case, boy, you're talking about a horse that just lays over the field. We'll find out if that's sort of the more accurate number or if the 59, you tack 20 onto that, you're looking at a 79. That's at least more in the ballpark of what she's done in the past. But that was her first start as a three-year-old. There's no reason to think that she couldn't take a big step forward there. She's seven to five on the morning line. If you're looking for one other horse to throw out there, how about the eight? Nice and broad. Uh, again, from a buyer's standpoint, she's on the light side. But the time form ratings are solid. Broke through. Broke the maiden most recently. Granted, in gate-to-wire fashion, it seems unlikely she'll make the front here. But at 12 to 1, she's one that maybe you want to use as a backup because they're all going to need to beat the five Parisian Diva. In the payoff leg of this $100,000 guaranteed pick four sequence at Charlestown on Charlestown Classic Saturday. Again, the race 9 through 12. That is the sequence in here. You can play it on DRF bets. I'd encourage you to play with DRF Ticket Maker. Get down, get involved with this fun sequence. Race number 9, the kickoff leg of this 50 cent $100,000 guaranteed pick four sequence. The Russell Road at Charlestown race number nine is 429 Eastern on Saturday. Good luck.